Hello everyone and welcome back to the good stuff. We are back at the 1921 World Chess Championship match between Jose Royal Capablanca and Emmanuel Lasker. This is game six uh, after four games, uh, well four very fighting games that ended in a draw. Capablanca was finally able to win game five. Uh, it was a really intense game and if you've been with us uh, from the beginning you know that Lasker played a brilliant game. He sacrificed the exchange, he tried to make it uh, happen and then in the end uh, just blundered. You know it was uh, this move draws, this move loses, Lasker chose the only move that loses and Capablanca is now uh, up one point in the match. So here uh, Lasker with the white pieces in game six can he uh, equalize the match and uh, well just uh, try and hold on uh, well <laughs> uh, to, to the title so to say. Uh, so Lasker with the white pieces opens with e4 and it's very interesting La Lasker will play the exact same line that Capablanca played against him in game three of this match which we've covered. Uh, we have e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, and bishop to b5. Rui Lopez is on the board, and knight to f6. Capablanca goes for the Berlin defense. We have castles by Lasker, uh, d6, and now d4. So like I said, up until move, uh, I don't know, it's a move... Uh, well, uh, 13, uh, the game follows uh, game 3 of the match, uh, you know, move by move. Bishop to d7 by Capablanca, knight to c3, and now bishop to e7. Uh, we have rook to e1, now comes e captures on d4, uh, we have knight captures on d4, and Capablanca castles. Uh, Lasker grabs on c6, we have b captures on c6, and now bishop to g5. Today, queen to f3 is the main move in this position, uh, but bishop g5 also can be played. Uh, we have rook to e8 and now queen to d3. So just for comparison, uh, this uh, line has uh, continued to, uh, you know, uh, has been played after this match for a very long time. For example, in uh, 1945 in Moscow Championship, David Bronstein has had this position against uh, Peter Romanovsky and Romanovsky continued with knight to g4, offered the trade of the dark square bishops this way. Uh, David Bronstein was able to win this game. But here Lasker continues with h6. We have bishop to h4 and now knight to h7. Capablanca offers the exchange this way, the, pretty much uh, the exact same way uh, Lasker did it in game 3. And uh, if you remember, we mentioned that Capablanca says that capturing is the main line, but he feels that uh, bishop to g3 is stronger. But uh, for the moment, he decided not to play it. Here, Lasker also captures on e7. We have rook captures on e7. And here in game 3, Capablanca played rook e3, followed, uh, well, with the idea of rook to g3, where, where he wanted to create an attack against the black king. But Lasker goes queen to c4. And this is now uh, a new move uh, up until, uh, you know, then. then uh, but it was never played again after this game, Lasker versus Capablanca. So it's a very unique move and a very unique line. Uh, so the, the idea is just capture the pawn on c6 and Capablanca defends it with queen to e8. Now the c6 pawn is defended and also you put more pressure on the e4 pawn. Uh, perhaps after the knight, uh, you know, jumps to g5. With rook to e2, Lasker now is ready to double rooks on the e-file. Capablanca says that rook to e3 also could have been considered, you know, just in case you want to switch it over to attack mode. But okay, uh, Lasker uh, has other plans. We have rook to e2 and now rook to b8 by Capablanca. Uh, just a nice developing rook with a threat. So Lasker defends it with b3 and now c5. Capablanca kicks the knight back. Uh, also perhaps make some room for the bishop if possible. We have knight back to f3 and now... Uh, Capablanca says that knight to g5 would probably have been better here, but here he played bishop to b5, and he says uh, he's not all that satisfied with the endgame uh, that uh, that he got. Uh, so knight captures, uh, we have queen captures on b5, queen captures, rook captures, and now Lasker starts bringing the king into the game. King f1. Uh, we have knight to g5 finally, and Lasker avoids the trade and also defends his e4 pawn. So knight to d2. Uh, and now knight to e6. And here Capablanca says that this was a very important maneuver with the knight uh, getting it over here. And it was one of the reasons that he decided to trade queens in the way that he did. Because now he wants to force Lasker to play c3. Without Lasker playing c3, uh, it would be very hard for Capablanca to deal any damage here. Because here you can see that the b pawn and the knight are controlling the c4 square. So if Lasker is unable to push c4, uh, and if he's unable to break uh, the queen side with the a pawn, uh, then uh, Capablanca will have a very hard game. So he wants Lasker to play c3 because at some point Capablanca will push a5 and if Lasker pushes a4, which he probably will, uh, then the b3 pawn will have to be defended by a piece, not by a pawn, and this will allow Capablanca
Ivanka, uh, you know, to, to stifle Lasker's activity. So this is the plan. And here Lasker, of course, doesn't want to allow knight to d4, so he plays c3. Uh, so this part of Capablanca's plan was achieved with f6 by Capablanca, uh, and now knight to c4, uh, a great square for the knight, with knight to f4 now, attacking the rook, rook to e3, and now knight back, sorry, knight back to g6. Uh, with knight back to d2, and now rook back to b8 by Capablanca. Uh, the rook uh, can now come over to the e-file if needed. Uh, with g3, taking care of uh, these squares, so Capablanca's knight cannot uh, cannot jump over there. Uh, and finally, a5 by Capablanca. And this is what Capablanca meant. If he's able to push a4 and um, create some sort of a breakthrough on the queen side, it will be very good for him. But now, as uh, Alaskar pushes a4 and prevents a4 by Capablanca himself, uh, the b3 pawn has to be protected by a piece uh, uh, instead of by a pawn. If this pawn was on c2, the position would be much better for Alaskar. So here, uh, Capablanca says he's very happy about, uh, about the position that he got. Uh, knight to e5, okay, you push g3, now you create some other weaknesses. Uh, with f4, pushing the knight further back, and now knight to d7. With king to e2 by Lasker, and now knight to b6. Uh, with king to d3, and now c6. At some point, uh, if Lasker is ready to create a breakthrough with e5, Capablanca can always capture with the f pawn and then uh, push push the, the d pawn uh, forward. Uh, we have rook a to e1, now Lasker doubles on the e file, and now king to f7. And here, uh, if you play e5, like we mentioned, Capablanca was ready to capture with the f pawn, f captures and d5, and he says that he likes his position. Well, Lasker could continue e6, for example, with check, king f6, rook f1, check, king g6 now, and well, uh, it's uh, just a just a very nice position for for both white and black. But Capablanca can always play something like King H7, King G8, and bring the rook over to F8. And uh, well, it's hard to say if the E6 pawn is a strength or a weakness in this position. Uh, so Lasker agrees with Capablanca's assessment. He goes Knight to C4, offers a trade of knights, and Capablanca decides. Well, it's time for this knight to go. We have knight captures, king captures, and now just rook to E6. Uh, preparing to meet e5 with, with a nice capture and then d5 check because the king is the only now uh, one guarding the b3 pawn. And here, after some consideration, Lasker decides for e5. It's hard to say if anything would be better. It's a pretty pretty difficult position. So Lasker did push e5 with f captures, f captures, and now d5 with check. So giving up the c5 pawn with king captures on c5. Now you see why rook to e6 was so important to keep an eye on the c6 pawn. And now Capablanca captures on b3. Uh, and here, uh, what do you play here? Now Capablanca, uh, well, e uh, <laughs> the material on the board is equal. Uh, but uh, you can see that uh, the, uh, both players have, uh, well, Capablanca has three pawn islands, Lasker has four pawn islands. So in this uh, regard, Capablanca's position should be better. And uh, now he feels that Lasker is the one that will have to work uh, for a draw here. Uh, Lasker pushes c4 here, uh, now offers a rook trade. We have d captures on c4, and now uh, rook to e4, the only move that r actually works. Uh, we have... Uh, pawn to c3, and now rook to c4, preparing uh, to play something like, uh, well, rook to e3, and then capture the passed pawn. Uh, we have h5 uh, by Capablanca, and now rook to e3. We have rook to b2, going after the h pawn, rook captures on c3, we have rook captures on h2, and now king to b6. Uh, Capablanca delivers check, we have rook to b2 check, king captures on a5, and here g5, and it was in this position uh, that uh, Lasker and Capablanca agreed to a draw because, uh, well, they say that there is no point for either side to push for something here. Uh, for, if, if you want, uh, we could play this out to, uh, to convince you that it is a draw. Uh, for example, white could offer a rook trade, rook b3, captures, captures, and now start pushing on the king side, let's say h4, captures, captures, and now black will, of course, try and put a rook behind a pass pawn and start to queen this pawn, and uh, white will, of course, get the king out of the way and try to queen this pawn. So it's basically a race, but both of them know that uh, th there are no winners in this race. So let's say rook e3, defend the pawn, but now rook to h6, preparing to push the pawn. Rook to h3, blocking the pawn, and now king e6, uh, going after this pawn here. King to b6 now, preparing to push the a pawn. We have king captures on e5, and now a5. Here, black will use this c5 check uh, to get the king uh, a bit away from the a pawn. We have king captures, and now king to f4. 
going after the rook, king back to b5 so you can start pushing your passed pawn, king to g4, rook to h1, and now finally h3. We have a6, rook to h8, and now continuing the race. We have pawn to a7, king to g3, we have king to b6, and now pawn to h2. King to b7, now comes king to g2, and of course here there is no other way to play this. Rook captures on h2, uh, you are trying to make the rook capture, but of course black will capture with the king. King captures, now white will get the queen into the game, rook captures, king captures, and there, there you have it, a, a nice draw by insufficient material. One of the ways to draw this, of course. Uh, but yeah, uh, after g5, uh, both of them know that this is a draw and they don't uh, try to play this out. Uh, I chose uh, this quote above the board, I keep on fighting as long as my opponent can make a mistake. Uh, this is a quote by Emmanuel Lasker, so here Lasker felt that <laughs> there is no way Capablanca could make a mistake. Uh, so, uh, you know, he, he didn't think there was even a possibility that Capablanca makes uh, a mistake that would allow him to push for something. Which is just uh, really insane how, uh, how much uh, Lasker respects Capablanca. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's the game. Uh, yeah, it's not really a crazy game or anything, but I thought it was really important to show all the games of the championship, especially since Lasker is now down a point. So, uh, you know, this really shows uh, how, uh, how uh, in what's, uh, you know, uh, in what condition he is, you know, psychologically. Will he, you know, now try to go all out or just play a normal game and see what happens? Here he continues like nothing happened. And this is something you should expect from, from such a strong champion like Emmanuel Lasker. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's it for game six. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Edwin Engel, uh, uh, Engelbrecht, uh, Kopale Kumar, Anthony Brown, Luca Pete, and uh, Calcio Calcio for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Uh, you know, continuing the Capablanca saga, the good stuff, uh, checking up on your suggestions, and perhaps we'll see what uh, arises. Thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your weekend.